Hi, my name is Johnny Kickleiter, and I uh, have seven great uncles that served in the Civil War. And the title of this presentation, The Exploits of the 4th and 5th Georgia Cavalry. I hope you enjoy it. William Kickleiter, buried at Beards Creek, uh, born in Glenville, Tattnall County, southern Georgia. Notice the, uh, we had uh, gravestones uh, refurbished, sandblasted, and reset. Ebenezer Kicklider, Frederick Kicklider, his stone cleaned up, uh, his stone cleaned up nicely. Interesting, uh, he has two stones. Um, they're both identical with the inscriptions. The only thing I can think of is uh, some family members disagreed with one headstone and ordered another. Jesse Kicklider, uh, his headstone was broken in half. I ordered a new one from the VA. They delivered. We had a ceremony there some years ago dedicating his uh, new gravestone. Beautiful job. Henry Kicklider. Jacob S. Kicklider is not buried at Beards Creek. He's buried at Liberty Baptist Church Cemetery in Hinesville. He had a marker and found this documentation. This thing was ordered back in 1962. So thankful for whoever did that. Matthew Kicklider is buried at Bethlehem Baptist Church Cemetery in Jessup, where my father was born. And he has a marker. Now, where are these cemeteries? Just for a point of reference. Beards Creek, located uh, right there at Tattnall County. Uh, Liberty Baptist Church is where Jacob is buried. And Bethlehem Baptist Church, Matthew. And Wayne County, again, that's where my father was uh, born. Where did these, these brothers enlist? Well, five of them traveled from Glenville down to South Newport. Jesse, Henry, Frederick, Eben, and William, they enlisted there. And Matthew went over to Doctortown. Not sure why. But in 1864, uh, there was an issue, of maybe prior to 1864, maybe that's why Matthew went to Doctortown. The federal, uh, federal uh, troops raided the uh, place where they enlisted. I'll let you read that. You can pause this video. Doctor Town, again, uh, there's a, there's a uh, marker there, and I'll let you read that. You can pause the video. What are some of the exploits of the 5th Georgia Cavalry from 61 to 62? Well, they needed a, the coastal needed some security, and so that's what uh, produced the, the cavalry to start with. And the place was simply defenseless by mid-62 because just about everybody left to join the army. And the offshore islands were abandoned, and the residents obviously moved to safer locales. And the 1st and 2nd Georgia Cavalry Battalions formed, were formed in 62, and they became the 5th Georgia Cavalry in January of 63. Company, was, company D was known as the Liberty Guards. They had to bring their own horses as guns. I suppose that was uh, pretty normal, but they were issued sabers. Scouts out. Here's a drawing, a, a portrait of uh, what they believe the patrols look like. You can see the, the waterway in the background, the, the marsh grass, and I love this dog here. Looking for Yankees. What's some of the exploits? Well, the Isle of Hope is one. Uh, they skirmished with a small number of uh, Federals and gunboats there at the Isle of Hope. And a battle, and I hope I can pronounce this correctly, Poco Taligo, October 62, just uh, north of Savannah. And there's a placard there commemorating that event. And the Battle of Alusti in northern uh, Florida back in February of 64. And there's a placard there. However, the folks became bored with patrolling the coast. There wasn't much going on, uh, and uh, they were starting to interfere with some of the locals. Uh, some of the fathers were getting irritated with the troops coming in and dating their daughters and whatnot. You can imagine how that went. And so they requested to be assigned to Virginia or Tennessee, and eventually were ordered to Augusta and go on the way to Atlanta. My guess is they went to Augusta first because they had a better railroad from Augusta to Atlanta. And they were support to, there to support the Army of Tennessee, which was Wheeler's Cavalry. And there's several skirmishes there, northern Georgia, Noonday Church, Altoona Hills, Kennesaw Mountain, 
New Hope Church, Peachtree Creek, Battle of Atlanta, Jonesboro, Decatur, Noonan, and Woodbury, Tennessee, up north, and we'll discuss that here momentarily. The skirmishing and harassing, that's all they could do was harass Sherman on his march to the sea. And you can see this map taking Sherman all the way down to Savannah here. And interesting about Savannah, and I visited there several times, the city was not burned. And the reason was the city fathers showed up at the, at the, uh, at the city limits because they heard what Sherman was doing. And they gave him the keys of the city. Saved, saved the town because they knew what was going to happen. This is an interesting story. The, 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 the text says that, that Sherman was prevented from going to Augusta. No one really believes that because if Sherman wanted to do something, he did it. And there are a couple of rumors, stories of why he did not. He didn't think Augusta was of any strategic importance as one. And I'm inclined to believe that, being, being a military man and being a military man myself. Secondly, there was rumors he had a girlfriend living there from his college days. They harassed the 5th Cavalry, uh, harassed Sherman all the way up into North Carolina, and eventually, when the CSA surrendered at the Battle of, uh, the, when the CSA surrendered, uh, they surrendered also at the Battle of Bentonville, and they were paroled and sent to Augusta, and told to go home, and they walked the road, whatever they could get. Now here are the mustard records for the uh, for the brothers, seven brothers. And I won't go into detail on these, but you can pause and look and see. Um, you, you've got here that uh, Georgia succeeds. Interesting uh, factoid, Tattnall County was one of the, was the only county in Georgia that voted not to succeed. thought that was interesting. Here we have Jesse. Don't know what this is about. Detail A wall. And Henry. And uh, Ebenezer, he left at Sherman's March and went back home, I suppose. Frederick, Jacob, and here's the key point about that uh, mention of the battle in Tennessee that they had. He was captured in Tennessee on September 6, 1864. And here was the muster, absent, captured in Tennessee September 6 in the hands of the enemy. This is uh, where he was in that general area. They were doing some behind the lines uh, activity, trying to disrupt supply lines, and he was captured in Woodbury, then shipped to Ohio to a place called Camp Chase. And this is a roll call for the prisoner of war. Camp Chase, uh, lots of uh, Union soldiers went through there, and uh, they had 25,000 Confederate prisoners and uh, uh, at one time, and over 9,400 men were held at, held at the prison. Uh, excuse me, I misstated that. Transitory, 25,000 transitory there, but didn't necessarily stay, but 9,400 were held there, and uh, 2,260 are buried at the Camp Chase Cemetery. Ben W. Darcy, he was somebody who was captured with Jacob, and he wrote mem memories of the capture and imprisoned his title in a war story or my experience in a Yankee prison. And what caught my eye was his book is at the Statesboro Public Library, not far from my father's hometown. I called him to try to get a copy and they wouldn't give it to me, afraid I wouldn't send it back. But he's buried at Macedonia Baptist Church Cemetery in Statesboro and sadly there's no CSA marker. What about the 4th Georgia Cavalry? Well, it was based its headquarters in Waynesville, about 35 miles east of Waycross. Eventually moved to Scriven. These names won't mean much to uh, out, people outside of that area, but my family, they'll know where they are. Their mission, ward off federal incursions, recruit, courier duty. Kind of simple. Clinch's command contributed 250 of its strength of the 900 men to the Battle of Alusty in the spring of 64, which is in northern Florida. And Company A, where Matthew, Matthew Kuklater was, he did not participate in that engagement. He stayed in Georgia. And some units were ordered to Charleston in 1864, summer of that year. Others, including Matthew, went to Macon. Some of the other activities, they were actually sent to Columbus, Georgia. The intelligence said Sherman was headed there and they wanted to defend industrial works, but the intelligence turned out to be incorrect. Sherman did not go uh, to Columbus. Eventually, they were deployed to Atlanta to join the Army of Tennessee and fight Sherman there. 
They moved to southwest Atlanta and met Sherman at the Battle of Jonesboro, which is right there. They had severe losses in Waynesboro, uh, just terrible losses. And the Battle of McAllister and Sherman's occupation of Savannah ended the major military ops and operations. They, they essentially uh, stopped uh, fighting and suffered a 90% depletion. That's pretty amazing. Uh, uh, the 90% depletion of a military force is, is just is not acceptable. And Clinch disbanded the 4th Cavalry in early May, and he simply said, return home and go to work. Matthew surrendered on 10 July, and here's Matthew's muster records. He joined very late in the war, probably because of his age, and he was paroled in Thomasville, May 19th, 1865, and there's his parole record. And here was the oath of surrender that the uh, forces had to sign, and you can pause the video and read that. My sources for this were uh, In the Saddle by Timothy Diaz and Swamp Water and Wiregrass, and I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you for listening and watching.